It's another glorious, beautiful afternoon out here on the Big Lake, and today we're talking about the five best baits, presentations, and lures that worked for me in 2022. Stick around. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and 2022 is a done deal. It's over with. We can put it in the books. So it seems like it's a perfect time to go back through the year and look at the best baits, lures, and presentations that caught me not only numbers of fish, but quality size as well. And 2022 was probably my best year as far as both categories. Now, I didn't catch my PB as far as weight goes, but I still caught some rather nice keepers, many of them close to six and seven pounds. So I can't complain about that. Overall, it was a very good year. So before we get into this list, a couple of caveats. First of all, I'm not going to be covering any soft plastics. There's so many jerk baits and craws and worms and drop shot baits and Carolina rigs and whatever. That can be a video all on its own. And I did catch plenty of fish using soft plastics. But in this video, we're going to be sticking to hard baits and jigs and things like that. Now, the main thing here is, is we're going to be taking a look at several categories and I will be whittling down the baits from those categories to get to the best one. In the end, we'll have the five absolute best baits that worked for me over the course of 2022. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First up, we're going to talk about regular types of jigs, football jigs, flipping jigs, casting jigs, what have you. And the first one we're going to be looking at that did exceptionally well for me this year, as it has for many, many years, is good old Archie Jig. These little $2 jigs that you get from Walmart, man, I love these things. I get them by the handful, and I have no problem throwing them in the slop because I know if I break off, well, I can just go get another one. And you can see this poor guy. He's so beat up. I have used this jig and used this jig, and that hook is not bent out and it's still plenty sharp. So a lot of people have the concerns about using these cheaper jigs that they're afraid the hooks are going to bend out or they're going to get dull. Well, this one here I've been using for probably all of the year and it hasn't bent out and gotten dull yet. I'm still catching fish on it. And the thing I like about these Archie jigs is they've got that really wide head. That means they skip exceptionally well. An Archie jig is the best skipping jig I have in my arsenal. I can skip them under brush, I can skip them under docks, and you guys know how much I love skipping baits deep under targets where I know those big girls are hiding. This is a great way to do it, but it's not number one. So what's the best jig I used all year? Well, this guy right here, a little Bitsy Bug or the Bitsy Flip version little quarter ounce Strike King Bitsy Bug jigs. These things are so versatile. And you know how much I love a versatile bait. A bait for me has got to pull double, triple, quadruple duty. They're great as they are. Put a little trailer on them and they can do light flipping along grass seams and around wood and whatnot. And they do amazing for that. But you can take that skirt off and you can wacky rig a worm, which you guys have seen me do plenty of times, as I call the wacky jig, or it's known as the stupid rig, and I've caught plenty of fish doing that as well. Actually, I've caught a lot of good fish doing that, which is why this is the number one jig for 2022. And next up, we've got the reliable old swim jig. And anybody who's watched this channel for a long time knows I am a huge fan of all things swim jig. I feel like they are the Swiss army knife of your tackle box. They can do so many different jobs and they do them well. You can fish them deep, almost like a lipless crank. You can fish them in brush, you can fish them in grass, you can fish them under docks. You can fish them in a myriad of different ways with a ton of different retrieves. The Alabama shake, the Texas two-step, or even just a straight retrieve with a stutter and pause, start and stop type of retrieve. First up is this guy. This is a Guggen Bates Grass Hero. It's a half ounce swim jig, and you can see it's got the inline line tie and it's got that real narrow head. This thing has caught lots of fish for me. It worked exceptionally well in the pre-spawn and all the way up and through the post-spawn. That white color was really catching them for me. Up until the summertime, 
then I had to switch colors a little bit and I went to a little more of a natural green. But this grass hero, these Guggen grass heroes, these things aren't that expensive. They're about $4, but they're an exceptionally good jig. I've got no complaints. I've caught a lot of fish on these. However, next up is a jig that I prefer just a little bit better. And that is the Sixth Sense jig. It's got a more wedge shaped head, a little more realistic type of look. And that flatter head, I can skip these just a little bit better. And you guys know I really like skipping. We just talked about that a minute ago. So having that wider head, it catches a little bit more water. I can skip with it pretty good. Now, what keeps this from being higher on the list is it's got this screw lock in there. And I am not the biggest fan of those screw locks. A lot of guys really love them. For me, it's more of a hindrance than it is a help. I still have to change baits after I catch a fish, especially if I'm using something that's really soft. It's still going to get tore up and I'm still going to have to change it. But now it just takes me longer. So I would prefer not to have that screw lock on there. That's what keeps this bait a little bit lower on the list. So what's number one? Well, anybody who's been watching the channel for the past couple of months through November and December, they will know it's a hack attack jig from Strike King. I have been tearing them up on this. This is the half ounce variety. I've also been using a three eighths and a quarter ounce. And what I've been doing mostly is taking the skirt off of these, putting a swim bait on such as a Kitek or a Rage Swimmer, and I've been slow rolling it just above the bottom through the slop. You know how popular it is to slow roll a swim bait in the wintertime, especially on highland reservoirs and the like. Well, in shallow lakes like this one where we have vegetation all year round, this is the ticket. This is what gets the job done. And that's why this is number one. So up next, we've got the good old lipless crankbait, just like this guy right here. This is a good old cotton cordell super spot. I've had this thing for years. It's got the original hooks on it. I don't see any need to change them out. Some guys like that sort of thing. For me, this catches fish just fine. And with that bluegill pattern, it catches fish in a lot of the fisheries that I have around here because there's sunfish in all of these fisheries. This little $3 bait just gets the job done. It's not quite a half ounce and it really doesn't cast as far as I would like. That's why it's not higher up on the list. However, you can tell by how chewed up this thing is, it has caught piles of fish. You can't go wrong with the old cotton cordell super spot. Well, next up, we're going to be spending even less money. That's right, less money than a cotton cordell. And that is this little guy right here. This is an Ozark Trails lipless crank, and these run about two bucks. These are about five eighths of an ounce. They're a little bit heavier, and you can see that they're shaped kind of like a red eye shad. They've got that same kind of profile. They've kind of got that same kind of shape, and you know, they've kind of got those BBs in there. Now, this sexy shad pattern, I've caught fish on this thing all year long. Now, the hooks, well, they're kind of bent out a little bit on this one, and I do need to change that hook out some, but that's after an entire year of fishing, and this is the original hooks I've had on the thing, so, and I've probably caught, I don't know, 100 fish on this, probably close to 100 fish on this bait alone, and it's still ticking, so, you know, for two bucks, you can't beat that, that's why it's on this list. But because of those softer hooks and the diminished quality of it, that's why it's not number one. Number one, well, can there really be any question or doubt about what number one is? And that is the one, the only, the original Strike King Red Eye Shad. This bait right here has worked from the spring through the summer, the fall, and even in the winter where I can take this bait and fish it finesse. I cast it out there, I let it sink, hit the bottom, and it just sits there. It'll flutter down and it sits there, and then I twitch the rod and it flips side to side to side. That rattle will attract fish, those lethargic winter fish, it, it attracts them from a long way off. Also, for a little bit different presentation, I can rip it up and then let it flutter back down. And then rip it up and then let it flutter back down. And I can combine the two. I can rip it up, let it flutter down, and then hop it side to side or whatever. And that finesse style fishing with this body style is just amazing. Now something like a Bill Lewis rattle trap, you know, it's a good bait, but I just don't have the same amount of success fishing it that style as I do with this. So for me, it's gotta be the good old Red Eye Shad from Strike King. 
Now, next up, we're moving into a little bit more controversial waters. Um, this is a type of bait that not a lot of people have success on, but a lot of other anglers have a lot of success on. Me, I'm in the latter category. I love them. I work with them all the time, and they do great for me as far as not only numbers of fish, but size and quality. And what is it? Well, it's chatterbait, bladed jig, vibrating jig, whatever you want to call it. These things are a fish catching machine. Now reports of their demise, well, I'm telling you, it's the jury is still very much out on that. I am catching fish on these every single time I use them. This is the little quarter ounce Z-Man chatterbait, little four or five dollar regular chatterbait. This is the one that works for me. I'm saving money, it's easy on my pocketbook, and I'm catching fish. And again, the versatility of it. I can slow roll it, I can start it and stop it, and that's what you normally think of when you're fishing a chatterbait. I will put a soft jerk bait on the back of this, a caffeine shad or a fluke or something like that, and that helps this blade have even more action. I can stroke it like a jig and let it sit and then stroke it again like a jig. And another thing I like to do is I like to take that skirt off. And we can do a couple of things after we take that skirt off. We can thread a tube on there and we can make the good old chatter tube. And you remember those things. Those things are killer, especially for you smallmouth guys up north. Do not sleep on the chatter tube. So that is a great presentation that you can use with just one little bait. And while the little chatterbait is respectable and it does well, it's not higher on the list. So what's up next? Well, this guy here. This is the Thunder Cricket by Strike King. This is the half ounce version. And you can see it's got a little bit different type of uh, head there. It's got the swivel or whatever you want to call that in the head. And it slides back and forth. That blade has a little bit more extra movement. It's got kind of a more compact deal to it. It's not as long as the jackhammer. Um, they come through the water, they come through the slop, great. And it's got a super, super strong thump. This will vibrate your hands. That's what I love about these, is that they vibrate your hands. To me, this is better than the jackhammer. Now, they're gonna be about comparable in price. This is probably gonna run you $14, $16, depending on where you get it. But to me, they're worth it. Nobody throws these, and I don't know why. Everybody's throwing the jackhammer when this, this is a far superior product. So I would give these a try if you have the chance. So if I love it so much, why isn't it number one? Well, number one is the newcomer on the block, the one that's taking the bladed jig world by storm and kicking up a lot of dust while doing it. And that is the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. Now you guys have seen and heard me talk about these several times now. They came out in the latter part of 2022, um, August, September, sometime in that area. And that's when I first started fishing them, and I've had nothing but amazing results with these. Now, unlike that monstrosity that is the Guggen clickbait, this is how you do a chatterbait differently. This is how you innovate on a bladed jig. You can see it's got a big hole right there, and the way that blade is threaded through that hole like that, and the weight is right here on the keeper. This head is plastic or whatever, porcelain or something, but this is where the weight is. And it gives that bait an even keel as it's swimming, so it comes through grass exceptionally well. Now, the only problem that I've had with these, and who knows if it becomes more serious, a potential deal breaker or whatnot, is that these mysteriously seem to break off constantly. Now, I'll be casting and the line will break, and there she goes. And I'll bring the fish in and the fish wiggles, and it looks like the fish gets off the bait, but it's not the line has broken and the bait falls off. I've had several problems with these breaking the line. I don't know if it's user error, and I don't know if it's something about the design of these baits. Until I find out more, I'm just going to say it's user error, chalk it up. I've changed my knot from a Palomar to a double Pitson, and we're gonna see what that does, see if that helps any. But your best bladed jig for 2022, at least in my opinion, Berkeley Slobber Knocker. Now lastly, what was the bait in 2022 that reigned supreme? What was the hard bait that I used to most effect? Caught most numbers, caught well, the best sizes on them. And that is, without a doubt, the good old hard plastic jerk bait. You see here, this is the Berkeley Stunna. Again, this is another late arrival on the year, came out later in the year. I wanna say 
well, probably about the summers when I started fishing these. And it's a great bait. I've had a lot of success on it. I've caught a lot of numbers of fish with these, piles and piles of them of all different sizes. This has got those super sharp Berkley Fusion hooks. If that's your thing, well, this has got them. Now for me, the only reason why this isn't higher up on the list is because it doesn't cast very well. It doesn't have a weight transfer system that slides a BB to the back when you're casting it to give yourself some extra distance. It casts okay, but it could cast much better. Although it is a sinker, so in the wintertime when the water's cold, that's key. This thing does very well in cold water, and it's got a great movement to it as well. I've had a lot of success with it, so if you get a chance to try these out, I would advise doing it. But next up on the list, well, is something that's going to be a little bit surprising to more than just a few people, and that is the old Smithwick Rattlin' Rogue. And we affectionately call this one the Cat Turd because, well, that's essentially what it looks like. This is the ugliest jerkbait I've ever seen in my entire life. It's a floater, and it's made out of plastic. Back in the day, these would have been made out of balsa, but this effectively does the same job. It's got a little bit of a rattle in it. It's, I don't know, goes to maybe five or six foot depth, maybe a little bit more if you're using six pound fluoro or maybe 10 pound braid, but it, it's a pretty aggressive floater. So this is great for coming up over grass. This is what I use it for. And I have caught so many fish on this thing, this ugly thing in dirty water, stained water, clear water. It doesn't matter. There's nothing in the lake that looks anything even remotely like this. And I have caught so many fish on it. The Smithwick Rattlin' Rogue. You know, if you see them, give them a chance. I mean, they're not really that expensive. They're about seven, eight dollars, depending on where you get them. But considering that some jerk baits can be as much as twenty-five dollars, I mean, what are you doing, Mega Bass? Why would you charge twenty-five dollars for a jerk bait? I'm not paying that. This works. I catch fish. I still have it. So there you go. Anyway, this is not number one. So for something to be number one, it's got to be extremely exceptional, right? Well, the number one jerk bait. Well, it's a surprise even to me, although not really, and it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody who watches this channel on a regular basis, and that is this guy right here, the regular H2O Express from Academy. This jerkbait, this cheap $5 jerkbait, I have caught so many fish on. I have caught piles and piles of fish, and you can see, yes, it's a blatant ripoff of a Mega Bass Vision 110. It's got that same body style, whatever, it's five bucks. It's got the same hooks on it that I bought it with, and it still does great. I have caught so many fish on this one and the chrome one that I'm sure you guys are very familiar with right now. I mean, these things are so beat up. They're so chewed up. They've caught so many fish. But for the year 2022, for numbers of fish and for the size of fish, this has got to be the one. This has got to be the bait that reigns above them all. A cheapo Academy H2O Express jerk bait. So there you have it. Those are the top baits for me for 2022. Some of them, not so shocking, but some of them were rather surprising. So we're gonna see what happens with 2023. Who knows what the future holds and maybe I'll even top my PB bass of 13 pounds, six ounces, which I caught right here in the big lake several years ago. You can hope, right? Thanks for watching Low Brawl Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.